guys, if you have followed me at all on social media, you will know that today is a big day for the Elysian Prophecy. I am doing my cover reveal and I'm so excited. I really, really love it. I think it looks amazing. Um, stay tuned to the end of the video to see that because there might be some of you that don't want to see it. I don't know why you wouldn't because it's amazing. But, you know, we'll get the content of the video done first and then I'll do my little cover review. Since I just got my cover back from the designer, officially I guess, I thought it would be an awesome opportunity to pair this with a video on working with a cover designer for your book. If you're going the traditional route, you probably don't have to worry about cover design, but for us self-publishers and us control freaks, we're going with the cover designers. If you want more information on why I decided to self-publish, I will leave that linked down below. Since I'm self-publishing, I paid for my cover design. And I almost paid at full price. I'll get to that in a second. But I willingly paid. How much did I pay? $470.24. That's how much I paid for an ebook cover. Why did I just shell out all this money for a book cover? Because it is so important. Your book cover is literally your first marketing opportunity for your book. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry, I'm still sick. That's why I sound nasally. <laughs> I just realized that when I said book and it was nasally. Since it's your first marketing opportunity, you need to nail it. Some of you will have skills in cover design or graphic design. Most of you should not do it yourself. Hire a professional because like I said, you don't want to botch this opportunity to snag a reader because your cover is going to be judged by readers. We all do it. It's just a thing we do. I went with Damon Za, Demonza, De I don't know how you say it. I'll put it down here. I went with them because I liked all of the covers on their website that I saw. Most of them drew my eye. They had the most, I guess, collectively, the most amount of books that looked professional to me. I checked out a lot of other cover designers and I just thought they were the most professional and I was willing to pay that much money to get a professional book cover. This is a huge investment to make. You obviously don't have to use the company that I use and I strongly urge you to do your own research. Your desires may be different than my desires. So do your own research. See what you want, see what you like, and see which cover designer works best for you. All of that said, I have a coupon code for you guys to use with Damonza, Damonza, De, however you say it, if you decide to go with them. The details for that are linked down below in the coupon code and their website and a whole bunch of stuff. So, you know, just like go down there in the description box because there's just lots of information. There's just so much. It's free. The information, the cover design is not. Again, do your own research. I went with them. I had a great experience working with them and I just wanted to give you guys a coupon if you decide to go with them because who doesn't love coupons? Like, who doesn't love coupons? I'm secretly a crazy coupon lady, like deep on the inside. Not enough that I actually clip coupons, but I wanna be, I want to be a crazy coupon lady. All right, so let's get to the meat of the video. I have a bunch of tips for you guys for working with a cover designer. Uh, wait, let me count them. I have five, so um, <laughs> tip number one is to make a list. This list is gonna have a lot of things, and it's kind of gonna be different lists, but get list happy quickly, because you're gonna make a lot. After you decide on a cover designer, they're going to request some information from you. I have linked down Damon Zaz. I just can't, I wish I had found out how to pronounce that before I made this video. I've linked down their website because they have a form that you can see with all the information that you need, depending on if you're doing an ebook, paperback, both, hardback, whatever, hardcover. So things you should typically have ready. Make a list of common themes in your novel. If it's really dark, tell them about it. If there's a special knight that comes up, tell them about it. When you see my cover, there is a crystal on the cover. I knew right away that that was something I wanted to feature on the cover of my book, so I told them about it. Next, create a list of pictures. These pictures will be other covers that you really like. Literally, make a list. I think I had about three pages worth of thumbnail-sized covers that I really liked, and I kind of let her, my cover designer, pick and choose which kind of ideas from which books she liked, I guess. I gave her creative freedom. Go to Amazon or walk through Barnes & Noble. Go to your genre, that's important because you're writing for your genre. Go to your specific genre or your target audience and see if there's any 
any trends that you might want to follow. In YA, there's a lot of people on the covers, or there's recently really scripted or I guess really unique fonts with like borders on the books. In thrillers, they have really big, usually really big titles and kind of more simple backgrounds, but that all depends obviously. Look for any trends in your genre and see if that's something that you find attractive and that you would like your book to have. There's also strangely a lot of different covers that use opposite colors on the color wheel like Divergent, they use the blue and the orange. So research some of that if you feel like it. Decide what it is in your genre that you would like to incorporate in your book and give them ideas about and shoot them little images of the actual cover because why not? No, we're all tech savvy now. Number two, give them creative freedom. I kind of said this, but this is important, especially in the beginning. Give them basically a list of all the things that you like and some ideas that you have. Some of you may be more decisive and may already know what you really want. Others, like me, had a huge list of things that I liked, a huge list of themes, and I literally just let her look at everything and figure out what she thought would look best. And that, I did that because she's a professional. This is what she does pr probably for a living. I don't know her that well because I just worked with her for the book. So once you give them some creative freedom, don't be afraid to make adjustments. Let them do their thing, but give them feedback. That's that should be a separate note, but you're gonna do that anyway. There's gonna be a back and forth between you two. Just don't be afraid to tell them what you like and what you don't like. I don't like the colors yellow and white next to each other. Something about it makes me feel physically ill. It's a tick of mine, and if she had shown me any that had white and yellow in it, I would have told her about it. So even if it's a weird tick like that, you're supposed to like your cover. So bring those things up. My designer was able to piece together a lot of the elements that I liked in a way that I didn't, that I hadn't really, I hadn't envisioned it that way. So if I had nitpicked her and kind of forced her to make what I thought I wanted, I wouldn't have gotten the cover that I did. And I really like the cover that I get it because it's amazing. A lot of times they'll give you a few different options to begin with and then you can pick the one that you like the most and make your tweaks to that one or you can kind of combine them, which is what I did. Most cover designers, the one that I went with included, make unlimited changes until you're happy. Anyway, don't be afraid to give the creative reins to the cover designer because that's their job. They're good at designing stuff. Number three, thumbnail sizes matter like a lot. It is so, so important that your lettering be legible, mostly legible, that your book be mostly discernible, that you can see most of the elements. Why am I saying most a lot? Because usually if you see a small picture of something, you can kind of infer what the other parts of that image are. If you see, you know, 75% of the letters, but you can't see a few of them, usually you'll be able to piece together what that word is. So you don't have to be able to see all of the elements of it in a thumbnail size, but you want them, them being your potential readers, to be able to see a good chunk of them. And why is, does that matter? Why would, you, why would you even care about that? Because if you're self-publishing specifically, for everybody, but if you're self-publishing specifically, most of your sales will be through eBooks. Where do people find those eBooks? On websites like Amazon where your book is always in a thumbnail size first. They have to click on it to see the big picture. If they're not able to see any of the font, if it's kind of a mixture of images that doesn't look clear when it's shrunk down to a thumbnail, you're gonna miss an opportunity for a snapshot. There's probably a more technical term for snapshot, but that's just what I like to term it as, name it as. So let me break it down. Somebody came up with the magic number seven, there's some debate on what that number really is, but we're just gonna go with seven. A potential buyer has to see your product seven times, an average of seven times before they actually purchase your product. So you wanna apply that to your book. If they can't see the details of your book, they're not knowing that they're looking at your book because let's be honest, there's a lot of us that just look at the images of the covers and we don't even read what's right below it. We don't read the title of the book or the author. We're looking for that thing that catches our eye, something that we've seen before, something we're familiar with. You need to make sure that your thumbnail is mostly discernible, <laughs> enough that the potential reader can use that as one of their seven snapshots 
I don't know why I keep doing this. It's really weird. If they can read the title on your book, that's a snapshot. If they see the big element of whatever you're including and it's unique, that's a snapshot. They might not buy your book then, but in two weeks, if they see your cover again, they might think, hey, I've seen that before. Maybe I'll click on it this time and see what it's about. And then they'll read your synopsis. Making sales is all about exposure. So set yourself up for those that magic seven number by making your novel easy to see in those small sizes because that's where your initial snapshots will be taking place. Number four, use PicMonkey to preview it or Canva or whatever thing, image editing software you wanna use. What I like to do whenever I get a cover design back, I always save that image to my computer and then I take a snip, a snipping, a snip, I use the snipping tool on PC. Basically, I just um, select the area on my computer I wanna take a snapshot of or a picture or a screenshot of. I was trying to use Mac words, but I honestly have no idea what the Mac word is for that. So I go to an Amazon page, I go to the genre, my genre, I go to YA, and I take a snapshot of that actual dashboard of what it looks like online. And then I take my image, I import my image, and then I shrink it down to look like fit into one of those little book places and I see what it looks like. I see how it kind of compares to other books. Also, this is where you can see if your thumbnail size does not look clear or if your name doesn't stand out in thumbnail size because a lot of times when it's big, we don't see those things. My name was not, it didn't pop down at the bottom because the blue was just too dark at the bottom. So the cover designer lightened it up behind my name and it looks so much better. So. Use whatever image editing software that you have and shrink it down to see how it looks at thumbnail size and to see if it actually catches your eye like other covers do. Number five, when in doubt, simple might be better. Red Queen or The Martian or Gone Girl, those are all books with really simple covers. A lot of them pack a punch when they're this simple because they don't have very many elements for the reader to get lost in. Or if you're doing, if you just wanna highlight the font, Caraval, that, I mean, there's a beautiful cover and it's, there's not really any image in the cover. These are clean covers that can serve well across many different genres. Really, it boils down to what makes you excited about your book cover. When choosing one simple image like this, think of what the most important thing in your novel is or what's a, a really important object. In The Red Queen, all we see on that cover is a crown. So, and it's got blood on it. So we can tell a lot just by the simplicity of that cover, there's death behind a crown that's going to happen. Just because you can add 50,000 image layers to your cover does not mean that you should. So be open to a simple cover. So scene break, clothing break, day break, it's a different day. I decided to refilm the last portion of that video because, or I guess of this video, because I changed some stuff, not about the book cover, but I decided to host a giveaway in celebration of this cover reveal. So all the details for that giveaway will be listed down below. It's hosted on Rafflecopter. Basically the giveaway is going to run for a week and then a week after that I will announce who the winner was within a week after that. So the giveaway is going to be for one e-arc of my novel, which is an electronic advanced reader copy. So whenever my book becomes available and whenever, you know, layouts finished and all that good stuff, you will be among the first to read The Legion Prophecy. All right, so that's the giveaway. Now on to the amazing cover. I'm so excited. Drum roll. I absolutely love it. I keep saying that over and over again, but I think it looks amazing. And I love the contrasting blue with the red at the top and then the smoke and then the crystal. All the detail in the crystal is that is just, I just think it looks amazing. So eek, I'm so excited. I'm just gonna leave this up for the rest of the outro because huh, I don't even know why it's just so exciting to have a cover because it's like the somehow it makes me feel like I wrote a book even though having 450 pages of words doesn't feel like I wrote a book that does feel like I wrote a book but this really feels like I wrote a book like that's my book all right so I hope you were excited for my cover reveal and I hope my 
tips and everything on cover designers was helpful to you guys. As always, subscribe to my channel because I post new writing videos every Wednesday. And if you ever have a question for me or a topic that you would like for me to cover, you can go ahead and tweet me at Vivian Reese or you can just drop a line down below because I'm usually pretty good at keeping up with my YouTube comments. Isn't it just, isn't it just beautiful? It's so beautiful. I love it. I'm so excited. I'm like a writer. It's crazy. All right, bye guys.